in the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Welcome or welcome back to the Broken Traditions Podcast with your host, Laron, aka Real Rap Ron. This week, I want to talk about something that is both critical and controversial, I would say, right? And it's the silence of Black-owned media or Black people in media, which is news media, that is silenced or silent about Black-on-Black -black crime. The reason why I want to talk about this is because recently, during a Juneteenth event, one in Oakland and one in Texas, there was mass shootings, right? Fortunately, the one in Oakland, no one lost a life. A few people got hit, but they are um, expected to survive their injuries. But can't say the same thing for the one that happened in Texas. Uh, two women were shot and killed at this Juneteenth event. And the media is silent about this. The media is silent about this. Not only the media, also the black owned media or people who have their respective platforms that are black that talk about uh, social issues, right? So why is this being swept under the rug? Why is this not being spoken about? That's the question I want to ask today. Also, I want to call out a few people who, who are silent about this, who are silent about this, but if the circumstances were different, they would be the loudest ones about it. But first, let's give a quick shout out to this week's sponsors, Garner's Garden. They offer amazing skincare, oral care, and cleaning products. Support them and support this podcast by clicking the link in the description and you'll get a discount. It helps keep Broken Traditions independent. Also, if you want to keep Broken Traditions independent, you can support me on Patreon or you could be a channel member on my YouTube. That helps keep the lights on. And also, if you like this content, you get this content a few days early. Appreciate everybody who are already members. And if you become a new member, definitely appreciate your contribution to keep Broken Traditions independent. First, I know this topic might ruffle a few feathers, but it's a conversation that we need to have. Before jumping to conclusions, before seeing the headline and get mad about things, listen to what I got to say in its entirety. That's all I ask of you. Listen to the full conversation. Then we can have a discussion in the comments respectfully. Also, if you guys are listening to this on Apple, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or whatever audio platforms, YouTube as well, YouTube now does it, whatever audio platforms you're listening to this podcast, listen to this podcast in its entirety, then email me. Email me at Laron, L-E-R-O-N, Laron at brokentraditions.com. We can have a conversation. Perhaps we could do a live stream and have this conversation go a little further, right? Appreciate you guys. Appreciate your input. It's definitely from the last episode, there was a lot of comments, a lot of engagement. I'm still going through the comments, but yeah, that was a great conversation. And you know, my perspective, maybe like I said, ruffled a few feathers, but you know what? We got to have these conversations. I started the video with a quote from Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And I'm going to read the quote to you guys. And this quote is relatable to today's topic and today's discussion. In the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. We will remember the silence of our friends in the end, not the words of our enemies. That is a quote from Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I waited till after Juneteenth to discuss this. The two mass shootings, I want to see who talked about this. I want to see who brought this to their attention. And I know people might, oh, I didn't hear about this. I didn't see this. You know, if you're a content creator, sometimes you do dig up things and look for things and trying to find things to speak about on your content, right? And perhaps a shooting, you know what I'm saying, at a Juneteenth event, don't fit your analytics, don't fit your algorithm, right? Perhaps this is something that your audience don't want to hear about. Cool. But let me give respect to where respect is due for the people that did talk about this that I've seen. And if you've seen anybody else who spoke about this, let me know in the comments so, you know, I could at least put it in the description or the show notes who talked about this and put videos the link to the video so you guys can check those out as well. First, I want to say Logic and Reason. Logic and Reason was one of the channels I spoke about this, right? Shout out to Logic and Reason for speaking about the shootings at Juneteenth events. Another channel that spoke about this is Black Conservative Perspective with Greg Foreman. Greg Foreman talked about this, did follow-up videos, spoke about this, and also spoke about the um, 
the crash dummy who decided to shoot up the Juneteenth event in Texas that shot 14 people. And also give a shout out to Dr. Rashad Ritchie, uh, undisputable, uh, indisputable, excuse me, indisputable by the way of Sharon Reed, right? I think Sharon Reed was filling in for Dr. Rashad Ritchie and she spoke about this on their platform. So I gave you three examples of three, I guess, black independent media outlets that spoke about this in their respectable platforms, right? And the ironic thing about this, if you want to look at this from a, a landscape of political, each one of those platforms I mentioned on diff different sides politically. Logic and Reason is more independent. Black conservative perspective, I mean, that's within the name. It's more conservative, more uh, Republican based. And Dr. Richard Ritchie and Sharon Reed is more liberal and more Democratic, right? I had to shout those people out because they spoke about it. And I'll give another one other shout out to one other person who spoke about this respectfully in the way that they, respect, they, they speak about things. And that is um, Benjamin Crump. Benjamin Crump, he, uh, he retweeted. Benjamin Crump is not a content creator, so I won't put him in his aspect, right? Benjamin Crump is an attorney, a lawyer, and he fight for civil justice as he see civil justice need to be fought for. So I would not put Benjamin Crump in that situation of not creating content because he's not a content creator, but he did mention this. And what Benjamin Crump did was he shared a video of the husband who lost his wife in Texas speaking about her final moments. So I give him a, a notable shout out, right? But what Benjamin Crump did is the same thing Roland Martin did when he come to this. And Roland Martin is the first person I want to speak about that is silent about this situation. Roland Martin. Roland Martin, I'm going to start off with him because to me, I hold Roland Martin at a higher standard when it comes to speaking about black issues. And the reason why I hold him to a higher standard when it comes to speaking about black issues because Roland Martin is independent and he created his own network to speak about black issues. And what, what more of a black issue that needed to be spoken about than black people getting shot and killed at a Juneteenth event by black people? Juneteenth is a federal holiday, right? Juneteenth is a federal holiday. The government acknowledged the end of slavery and they made Juneteenth a federal holiday. This year, two black women died by the hands of a young black crash dummy, 17 year old, um, shooting at his quote unquote ops. And I would make the argument that he probably did not hit none of his ops because he's shooting that recklessly. He shot 14 people and killed two. I went through Roland Martin's social media before I did this and to see that if he had any video segments about this. I watched his whole Juneteenth uh, recording episode that he posted on his, his YouTube, right? It's so like a maybe hour, an hour and a half, two hour episode. Watched a full episode, no mention of it. Uh, I went through his social media, through his uh, Twitter feed, Instagram feed, no mention of it. Only mentioned the same thing that Benjamin Crump did. Just a retweet, perhaps the same retweet, the same account that Benjamin Crump retweeted about the husband speaking about losing his wife. That's the only thing that I've seen that he mentioned. And he can't say that this didn't, you know, perhaps he knew about it. He knew about it because he retweeted it. Not, not only he retweeted it, I would take it a step further. Uh, Corinne Jean-Pierre, the White House press secretary, she spoke about this. So this made it to the White House. The president has been tracking these tragedies. We are praying for the families who lost loved ones to these senseless violence and wishing all those who were injured a speedy recovery. Our team is in contact with state and local officials. As the president has said, this is not normal and Congress must act. Talking about the tragedy, the, the event of the violence that's going on at Juneteenth events, how two black women lost their lives. But he didn't mention it. But he mentioned that Swiss Beats and Timberland sold or did a partnership with X and Twitter with Elon Musk to do verses. Respectfully, who gives a fuck about verses? Nobody watches verses no more. This is not 2020. We four years removed from verses being relevant. You feel me? You might see clips of verses 
if they start doing it over again, but nobody's sitting on their phone watching verses anymore. But that was just a conversation that he wanted to have on his platform. And the reason why I was disgusted by that, because I hold it to a higher level. Say what you want about Roland Martin, but Roland Martin speak about real issues that's going on in the black community. He speak about real issues. There's times that I've get I've gotten information from Roland Martin about something that I spoke about that nobody else really knew about. You know, he does that kind of work. And not to mention the shooting happened in Texas, which is his home state. That made me believe perhaps there has to be a criteria for people to speak about things. Because we all know if the person, that 70 year old kid was somehow a white man or a white person that's not transgender, right? Or that's not part of the LGBTQIA plus community. You have to be a white, straight, cisgender man or a police officer who did that same type of heinous crime. It would have been talked about ad nauseum. There would have been constant, constant discussion about this. There would have been panels all over the place about this. But since it didn't fit the criteria, nobody better than I. And that goes to the next person I want to speak about or the next platform I want to speak about. And that's MSNBC. By the way of Joy Reid and Al Sharpton. Both of them are contributors to that channel and going through their social media, going through their respected platforms that they have on that channel, neither one of them mentioned it. At least Roland Martin mentioned it. You know what I'm saying? I hold Roland Martin to a higher standard as far as putting out information about black situations than I do a Joy Reid and Al Sharpton. That's why I'm saying I'm disappointed in Roland Martin. But Joy Reid and Al Sharpton, regular scheduled programming, like I said, it has to fit the criteria. It has to fit the criteria for you guys to find this to be an important conversation to have as opposed to this is just really messed up. You know, we talk about protect black women and two black women got killed at a Juneteenth event. And y'all don't even mention it. I went through Al Sharpton's whole entire social media feed. Not one peep about it. Same thing with Joy Reid. Not one peep about it. But let it be uh, Joy Reid talking about a white boy summer. The fuck is a white boy summer? Who cares about that? Who cares about <laughs> what white people are doing for the summer? I don't know the whole gist of it, but a white boy summer have no impact on my life, but a crash dummy shooting up a Juneteenth event does. But you don't mention that. Perhaps the people or the handlers or the whoever is running MSNBC give you what you can speak about and a black woman getting killed at a Juneteenth event don't fit that criteria. You have to be quiet about that. We have to sweep that under the rug. Al Sharpton. Al Sharpton is going on these uh, uh, random um, marches in front of buildings holding up signs for DEI. You already know how I feel about DEI. If you don't, you can see other uh, conversations I had about DEI on my YouTube. But yeah, that's important, right? DEI is very important. But we don't have to talk about Black people getting killed at Juneteenth events. You can't get more Black as an issue than that. At a Juneteenth event, we talk about the, the freedom of slaves. The last slaves in this country under the law of the government was finally free. And y'all talking about some bullshit. Y'all doing some bullshit. Y'all don't want to discuss that. I understand y'all want to be real quiet and peep around and tiptoe around black on black violence. But damn, a Juneteenth event can't even get y'all attention. I mean, Corinne Jean-Pierre talked about this. Or the, at a White House press secretary talked about this. And now hopefully I'm wrong. Hopefully I didn't see... Uh, maybe I did discuss this. Maybe I did have this on your platform, but I doubt it. I truly doubt it. I doubt y'all had this because I understand how social media works. I understand how y'all platform works and what y'all do is y'all have these conversations. Y'all promote it on your social media. I go through your YouTube. I go through your whole data, all your data, right? I don't just come up here talking some shit. I go through things before I say something. And for the simple fact, for the sheer fact that I went through that and I didn't see not one inclement 
of you talking about this, I look at you skeptically now. I'm on my fours with it because shit. I see things differently on this side. And I see that y'all not even discussing something so major. Y'all discussing something so minor. I mean, I also have not seen this on CNN. I have not seen this on Fox. You know, they're not off the hook either. But I'm talking about MSNBC. You know, y'all is supposed to be the ones that are having these conversations. Y'all supposed to be the conversation leaders when it comes to these topics. Y'all supposed to be, Al Sharpton at least, is supposed to be the civil rights leader. And I guess him being the leader, the people behind him is not discussing this because I have not seen Tamika Mallory talk about this. Of course, she's a disciple or she's under or she came up under Al Sharpton. She's not speaking about this. A black woman getting shot at a Juneteenth event. You're not mentioning this. This didn't get your attention to share this with your followers and to people who support you. That this is a fucked up situation. That a man lost his wife. That these children lost their mother at a Juneteenth event by the hands of some crash dummy. That's shooting at his ops, his quote unquote ops. But he shot 14 people and hit two people. Now this crash dummy's going to jail for God knows how long. The reason why I'm so passionate about this, man, because discussing these issues is crucial. It's crucial because how crash dummies don't know shooting at a Juneteenth event should be off limits. How is that not a thing that they don't know? How is shooting at a Juneteenth event? You, you, how somebody get green lit at a June? It's certain events. It's certain things that should not be areas or locations of violence. There should be some type of quorum of like, all right, let's just chill. This is a Juneteenth event. This is bigger than us. If we got a problem with somebody, we can settle that problem somewhere else as opposed to a Juneteenth event. There should be a code. We talk about being on code. That should be code number one. Code number one is not to shoot up a Juneteenth event. And shooting up black people at a Juneteenth event. Why? That's not the code. We talk about always being on code. That should be the code. And, I, and, and I'm going to be real with you. It feels like gang culture is on top of black culture or above black culture. It feels like gang culture is now above black culture. And gang culture could... I guess, absorb black culture and black culture is now the uh, 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 the slave to the gang culture and the gang culture is the master. I'm, I'm talking like in, um, I guess, like computer terms, like, you know, you have a slave hard drive and on a master hard drive. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking in terms like that. So the slave is the black culture and the master is the, the gang culture. And we allow gang culture to engulf black culture and where that black culture can't even speak on gang culture. You feel me? We can't even speak on gang culture. We have gang activities where somebody shoot up a Juneteenth event and everybody's silent, except for the three channels that I mentioned, except for Logic of Reason, Black Conservative Perspective, and Dr. Rashad Ritchie, by the way, or Sharon Reed. Got to give her her props because she, she's the one who did it. They could speak on it, but y'all can't speak on it. Black on independent media, Black uh, YouTubers, Black content creators, Black uh, social justice warriors, y'all can't speak on this. Y'all have all these platforms and all these podcasts. Y'all can't speak on a black woman losing her life. Why? Because gang culture engulfs black culture. Gang culture is above it. Y'all got to be quiet. Y'all have to be quiet about gang culture. Gang culture is more of an impact in black culture to black culture than this goofy ass cop shooting up black people. Gang culture is more of an issue to black culture than some random white person shooting a black person. Gang culture is more a problem to black culture than some goofy ass white man calling a black person the N-word. But y'all will use that to gear people up and rile people up about issues that is not problematic as gang culture in the black community. As problematic as gang culture or crash dummies shooting up Juneteenth events. We need to start talking about these things. We need to start addressing these things because we're allowing the crash dummies to ruin our fun. I spoke about this and there was somebody in my comments and she said, 
I would not even go to black events no more because I understand what could happen. How in the world did we get to the level where a black person say, I'm not going to black events no more because I understand what happened? How is it to where my wife and I went to a black event and on the drive home, we was like, damn, ain't nothing happened. How is that our normal expectation of going to events when it's something that's black and it's black led that we're expecting some crash dummy to fuck it up? There should be a code. Where's that code? There is no code because nobody's speaking on it. That is a problematic issue. There is no code because nobody's speaking on it. Not him, not her, not this channel, not that channel, not that network, not this network. I mean, <laughs> say what you want about her. Corinne Jean Pierre addressed this at a White House press secretary. It made it to the White House. This tragic event made it to the White House. And y'all still silent as a church mouse. Preachers ain't talking about this either, speaking of church mouses. They're not speaking on this. They have to tiptoe around things like this. But let it be um, some altercation in the white dude killed a black dude. Oh, they all on it. There's a five-part documentary on Netflix coming out if something like that happened. But there's a black crash dummy shoot up a Juneteenth event killing two black women, shooting 14 people at a Juneteenth event. Y'all silent. I'm disgusted by this, man. Black on black violence, black on black crime is more problematic than anything right now in the black community or anything much more problematic that is going on with what the news wants you to be upset about, about the white boogeyman or what have you. This is more problematic, but y'all quiet. Why y'all so quiet? Why y'all so quiet about this? Let's have this conversation, man. Definitely appreciate y'all. Um, guys, listen to the audio, you know, give me a five star review, please. You know, um, broken traditions don't accept anything less than five stars. <laughs> give me a five star review, help the, the podcast grow. I appreciate y'all. Also, if you guys got any input, you want to have a conversation, just want to reach out to me, email me, Leron, L E R O N, at broken traditions.com. You guys watching this on Rumble, Patreon. Um, I'm gonna try fan base. If you guys watching on those platforms, also YouTube. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know how you feel about this. If you agree with this, share this with somebody. You know what I'm saying? Let's have these conversations respectfully outside of the internet. All right, man. Till next time. Peace. Real Rap Ron is signing off. All right, later. One.